Hey guys, so we're gonna do the video here. I'm trying to get it set up so you can see the board okay. Um, the goal here is this. We're gonna do the first three problems together. Those are the three questions that deal with these energy by pi charts. Um, we'll go through all three of those. I'm gonna point out some of the key features of those and then if you'll complete the remaining um, five questions that takes you up to number eight, we'll go over some of those tomorrow. So I'm gonna look at the first one and just to be clear, what we show in a pie chart are two things. One, by the size of the pie chart, we show how much total substance there is. And then by how we divide up each of the portions, we show how much of each of those objects there are. So if you were doing pie charts for different amounts of um, income that you have, you'd have your total size of your circle shows all the income that you have. And then the different portions of the pie that you would divide up would show like, I have a certain amount of income that comes from a job. I have a certain amount of income that comes from taxes, that, uh, income taxes that I get back. And so you could identify all those with different size pies. What we're going to do is we're going to use the pie to represent the amount of energy an object has. So just a couple quick things before we get started. Um, we're going to talk about a couple kinds of energy that you got in your vocab sheet today. Um, the first kind will be kinetic energy, which we're going to denote capital E sub K in this exercise. Um, gravitational potential energy, we're going to denote capital E sub little g. And then spring energy, elastic potential energy, we're going to denote as capital E sub s. So those are the three kinds of energy that we're going to work with. Let's do this first one together. Um, the first one is just of a ball being dropped from rest falling to the ground. And we're looking specifically at the time before it interacts with the ground. In order to denote that, we're going to show that the system here in a box, so dotted line box is going to be just the ball. So I put a dotted line box around the ball to show that that's the only object I'm considering at the moment. For each of the three positions I've written A, B, and C because I'm going to show a pi for each of those three different spots. Um, if I look at what else I can kind of figure out here, there's something special about part A and that is that V at part A is zero, which because that's the speed, um, and it's zero meters per second, that means that I know something about energy there. The kinetic energy, since it's based on motion, will also be zero joules. Um, but let's go ahead and draw then our scenario here. So we have A, B, C. We're going to have three different pi diagrams here to show the three different stages. If I look at the first stage, um, the object is not moving, so it has no kinetic energy, but it does have gravitational potential energy because it's in a uniform uh, gravitational field and it's above the ground, so it has the potential to fall and lose that energy. And so we're going to make a complete whole circle, and it's only one kind of energy, E sub G. And we're then going to go on and look at what happens at B, and what happens at B is that as we're falling, we're gaining some speed, which means that now part of my circle has to be kinetic energy. And we're actually losing gravitational potential energy, so we have the loss of height. If I thought about that over here, that would be at point B, H is going down while V is going up. I don't know exactly in what proportions those are happening. We'll be able to get to this later on in the, in the unit, but I'm going to keep my circle the same size to denote that the entire amount of energy, I don't see a reason to say that it's changing. But I could say that the portion that was gravitational potential energy has decreased, and so I'm putting that in this part of the circle. And then this part, this smaller chunk, is going to be E sub K. Now you might ask why, how am I deciding what portion of the circle it is? This is all qualitative right now, and so um, I'm just based on the diagram and, and what I see here saying that I don't think it's half the energy it's lost because it's not quite halfway down. Um, and so this is the way I'm doing my circle. Again, these aren't exact because we're, we're in the qualitative realm at the moment. And then for part C, a similar thing. We're almost to the ground to where I could say there is a height almost of zero. So we're going to call it H zero meters, which means that this is all E sub G. And so if you notice, what have I shown in this diagram? I've shown that, one, the total energy has stayed the same, which actually is true about this scenario. We'll learn why in a bit. Um, and then that the kind of energy we started with, E sub G, has changed into E sub K. I actually wrote this wrong. This should be 
E sub k, uh, e sub k here. E sub k. Okay, let's go ahead and do the next one. The next one being this rabbit that is wound up and then is moving until it eventually comes to a stop. Again, I've written A, B, and C as the three different um, portions that we're looking at. So I'm going to write up here A, B, and C for the three different pi diagrams that we're going to look at. So one thing I see that happens over the course of time here is that this arrow representing the speed is decreasing until we get to rest here at the end. Um, and so that would be, in this last case, V equals zero, which means that E sub K will also equal zero joules. I forgot here that I need to denote what my, my system is. In this case, my system is the toy and nothing else. That's going to become very important as, as time goes on. And so I see the decrease in speed, which means that the kinetic energy should decrease in my circles. And then I know that this toy was wound up at the beginning. And when you wind something up, that's an elastic kind of energy because there's a spring involved. It could be a rubber band as well. But as that's wound up, um, it has a lot of potential energy at the beginning, and then over time, it loses that potential energy. So you have two things happening at once here. You have the decrease in speed, and you have the decrease in potential energy because that toy is being unwound. And so both energies are decreasing. So what must that look like? Well, that must mean that the size of the circle that we have is decreasing over the course of the trip. So in the first one, I'm just going to split it 50-50 and say that half of it is spring energy or elastic energy, half of it is kinetic energy. I'm going to keep that half and half because both of them are decreasing in amount. So the whole circle is getting smaller over time. And then in this final one, if we look, the object's at rest, comes to a stop, it's no longer wound, so actually there is no value for energy, so there's zero energy at the very last portion. We're going to do the last piece here, which is this five-part diagram of an object being thrown up and then coming back down. So I've labeled that A, B, C, D, and E. I'm going to put some markings here to represent the velocity. We know it slows down on its way up. It's at rest at the top. And then it's coming down on the way down. And then we're going to draw our five diagrams here. So A, B, C, D, and E. And very similar to the previous one, um, the size of the circle is not going to change, only the value of what is in that circle. And so I'm going to start this one off, and then I'll have you finish it off. So the first one, we start off with a lot of kinetic energy and very little gravitational energy. Shown here. And in the second one, we're going to see that circle stay the same size but now less kinetic energy and more gravitational energy. I'll let you finish up the rest of this one and we'll check it together tomorrow as well as the other five circles.